In the beginning of this ayah, Allah opens his statement by saying, Arrijalu qawamuna ala nisa. Men are caretakers over women. Men are caretakers over women. The word qawam has several meanings. And the first of its meanings, qawmatul insan is husnu tulihi aw thabatuhu. Like, it's, uh, the word qawam means they are a source of stability for women. That's one of its first meanings. That men provide stability for women. Men are a way by which they are protected. Men why, uh, protected not just physically or financially, but also emotionally protected. So they are a, a place of security for them. And then, when, when somebody is committed to doing something, then the, the verb qama is used. When they've made up their mind and they're going to do something. Meaning men are committed to the care of women. Men are charged with the responsibility to protect and care for women. Then Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, in, in the use of this word, it's remarkable that this word, we have to understand that it's sacred. Because from the same letters, Qaf, Waw, and Meem, actually one of the other names of Allah derived from this word is Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum. Qayyum. And Allah describes Himself in the Quran as Qa'iman bil qist. Qa'iman bil qist, which is from the same origin. So Allah has used a word for men that is actually, it has some of the attributes that Allah uses for Himself. So we have to understand what that means. When Allah calls Himself Al Qayyum, He's saying He's the one Tadbir. He's the one who plans things out and lays out an entire sequence of events for the, 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 his creation and to ensure that they're growing and to ensure that they're provided for. Meaning when men become qawam, they're doing their very best to have an actual plan for the, the, the women in their, in, their, you know, in their wing, in their households. You know, another place in the Quran, Allah describes married men as muhsineen with a sad, not with a seen, with a sad, muhsineen, that's actually the same surah. And that actually means to bring women inside of a fort. Meaning, a fort is a symbol of protection, isn't it? And so if, a, if you, once you get married, she's entered your fort. She's protected from all sides. She's protected from everything else. And a, and a fort is self-sustained. The food is provided for, protection is provided for, shelter is provided for, everything's taken care of. And that's the idea of a muhsin. And a woman, interestingly enough, are described as muhsanat. Women that are inside of the forts, meaning they don't like to go out of the fort too. They, they want to stay within that fort. And they're described as someone who accepts that role that the husband is playing. In any case, Allah then says, بِمَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بَعْضَهُمْ عَلَى بعض. And this responsibility of being in charge of the care and the needs and the protection uh, you know, for women, this responsibility comes on account of the fact that Allah decided that some will have preference over others. Now, this is important language. Allah didn't say, بِمَا فَضَّ اللَّهُمُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِنَّ He said, بِمَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بَعْضَهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضُ Because Allah has given some preference over others. You know what that means? That means in some things, men have a preference. Allah has given them an advantage over women. And in other things, Allah has given women an advantage over men. Men have to take certain responsibilities. If they're going to be the caretaker or the, you know, the provider and you know, the protector and all of those responsibilities, that's actually a privilege Allah has handed over to women. You're not responsible for any of those things. And so Allah then opens it even further and then talks to the men and says, وَبِمَا أَنفَقُوا مِنَ أَمْوَالِهِمْ And that's because of what they have to spend from their monies. Now herein lies the key. Allah in the Quran did not talk exhaustively about marriage. Like He didn't describe all the things that make a marriage work. There are very few places in the Quran where Allah gave us some insights. And basically it's like instead of describing the entire building, He mentioned a few pillars. If those pillars are not there, the building's going to collapse. Right? And one of those pillars is that the money responsibility is the man's responsibility. He better go find a job. He better go get some work. He better go and provide because that is actually what Allah has made him responsible for. The word qawam in the beginning is now being explained by the fact that men are financially responsible for the groceries, for the car, for the fuel, for the electricity bill, for the school, you know, school supplies for the kids, everything. Everything. And that starts from the very beginning when you get married, you you're, you're take the responsibility of paying a mahar, a dowry. Right? And some people, they, they love to have a high number for the dowry for their daughter. They say it's going to be 100,000 or 50,000 or 250,000 or whatever. They put this crazy number and they're like, no, 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 it's okay. You don't have to pay it now. It's okay. But mashallah, we, we should have a number that looks good. And then people are married for 20 years and the guy hasn't paid his dowry. That's ridiculous. Because this is a condition of making a marriage valid. You can't put that off. You can't just keep kicking the can down the road. And a husband isn't even allowed to say to his wife, hey, by the way, can you give me a discount? I know you put 50, can we take a few zeros off of that? Or how about I give it to you, not dollars, can I give it to you in rupees? Same number, you know. <laughs>
you know, I'll give you, an, you know, Zimbabwean currency or something. I'll give you some other currency that, you know, because, you know, come on, just go easy. I, I have a hard life. Look at all the things I'm doing. Can you just go? If you agreed to it, then you signed on. If you didn't want to agree to it, then you should have never signed that document. You're actually not even allowed to hint that you have trouble paying your mahar. Men aren't even allowed to hint at that. And after you pay the dowry, like if you if you're a monthly payments you're making, you give her like five hundred dollars or something, a hundred bucks, whatever you give her, that's part of your dowry that you're paying off. And you pay her, and you're like, fine, here's here's your monthly. You know, this week was really tough. This month was. You can't make none of those comments. And if she takes those hundred dollars from you, and then she takes out a dollar bill and says, here, go get yourself some ice cream. If she does that, then and you say, okay, thanks, you can take that. If she did it on her own. But once you're handing that money, you're not even looking at that money anymore. It ain't yours. That's part of being a man, according to the Quran. It's part of being rijal qawamun ala nisa. One of the reasons I was uh, uh, pushed to give this lecture is because lots of people email me all kinds of questions. And there are many men around the world whose wives are being told to go get a job and work while they're sitting at home. Muslim men. And they're saying, you have to obey your husband. What kind of ridiculous, what religion is that? Allah Azzawajal made men responsible financially. And they can't even say, you have to go and we, we're having a hard time, you need to earn this or that. Look, if there's a desperate situation and a wife decides to go get a job and support financially or do on her own, that's a voluntary thing she's doing that she cannot be told to do. And if she does that, if she does get a job, if she does have a business, if her father left behind some stores or some property in her name, and you're like, hey, can, can we get some of that too? Because I'm your family. No, 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 that's her money. You can't touch it. Allah made this equation in which she has a financial advantage, meaning your money is basically hers. And her money is hers. And you can't look at it. You can't keep your eye on it. You can't say, whatever happened to that? What happened to that jewelry? What happened to that? No, 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 that's not yours to touch. That's not yours to touch. And whatever you gave her, like you say, hey, you know, on our 10th anniversary, I, I'm gonna give you this car. Then you know, once you gave her the car, it's her car. It's her, you can't even take the keys and say, I'm going. No, you gotta get her permission. And she better give it on her own good free will. No pressure, not even unspoken pressure that you can touch that car, because you gave it up, it's done. It's done. <laughs> give women their gifts happily and freely. Don't, you don't even think about them again. Don't even think about them again. So this, this financial sense that men are supposed to have is critical. And Allah mentions that as one of the first conditions of what makes a marriage work. What, make, what makes them men? الرجال قوامون على النساء بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض وبما أنفقوا من أموالهم. When they take that kind of responsibility, where the wife doesn't have to ask, hey, we don't have food for groceries, we don't have, we don't have money for groceries, we don't have this. Oh, I gotta give you again. You know, and for a lot of men, you know what they do? They feel that they owe financial responsibility or financial help to their brother, okay, to their sister, to their mother and their father who may be financially already taken care of, but you still want to give them, but you're not giving financial needs to your wife and your children. That's not being a man. That's not being a man. And some people are in financial abuse situations where <clears throat> I've even seen cases where the bank account is a joint account between the, the husband, the, the, the man, and his mother. And the wife has no access to the account. What kind of, what Islam did you learn? Where did you get this from? And the wife is being constantly told, by the way, that's our son. It's like, that's our property, you're just renting it. <laughs> you know, this is what, what the wife is being told. If you wanted to act that way, then you, should, you had no business getting married. If you wanted to treat, financially treat the spouse this way, then you have no business being in the institution of marriage. This is the first and foremost principle. You know, there are people who give mahar, they give marriage gifts, or even at the wedding ceremony, they give lots of presents, and then a couple of days later, the guy's family says, hey, can we have those back? We need them for, for our daughter's wedding. <laughs> Once you've given it up, you've given it up. It's done with.